very fortunate for uh, this year to have with us Ambassador Francisco Carrion, who um, I've already told you some about him, so I'll just give a couple of the brief highlights because telling you his full history would be the whole session. He's done so much um, here in Ecuador. Um, Ambassador Carrion has been a, a professor at Flaxo and the director of their ac International Academic Programs Unit. He's been the ambassador of Ecuador to the United Nations, the Minister of Foreign Relations of Ecuador, and I was trying to remember the exact title, the one about migration that you were the, what was the title? I was a member of the uh, Committee on Migrant Workers of the UN. Right and many other roles in a long and illustrious um, uh, career. So he is certainly a policy maker, a decision maker, and an academic. Um, and so that gives him a unique perspective to share with you. The, the, the talk today is gonna focus a lot on the Ecuador-Colombia tensions, and in particular, the event in 2008 when Colombia's armed forces bombed a FARC camp in, at Angostura, and then after that the two countries cut off diplomatic relations and the Carter Center um, and others helped to foster a track two dialogue, a, a binational uh, dialogue um, with not official state representatives, but people from civil society, very high level people who had influence uh, and relationships with people in the state, but who could take bigger risks and, and who could talk more frankly than people who were representing the state. And so Ambassador Carrion was a part of that group. And as we told you before, Cecil also was involved in coordinating that. So uh, thank you for coming and sharing with us. And we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jim. Um, uh, first of all, as you can see, I, I am no more an ambassador. I uh, am supposed to be wearing a tie, but that's <laughs> finished. I, uh, I am very much comfortable without a tie and very comfortable to uh, have a talk with, uh, with you. Uh, I apologize uh, uh, for my, my English. Uh, it has been uh, oxidado. Rusty. 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 The last uh, few years. Uh, but I will do my best. If uh, there is any uh, question, please uh, ask me. I'm here to learn as well. Uh, because uh, uh, everything about uh, uh, conflict solution is very uh, near to me. My career. Uh, was uh, really uh, marked or touched by my participation, not uh, only or not uh, really with the uh, Ecuador-Colombia conflict, but uh, the Peru-Ecuador uh, conflict uh, that was in uh, uh, well 20 years ago, uh, and that was really interesting. I am sure. I think that there is. Uh, Ambassador Suarez, that is what he spoke with us oh, two so days ago. You were aware so about that. that. That was really my um, uh, real satisfaction uh, uh, about uh, deciding to be a diplomat uh, because I wanted uh, my children to uh, live in a uh, country in peace because Ecuador wasn't in peace. Uh, since uh, it was created, or it was uh, declared uh, its independence from Spain. And finally, in uh, 98, uh, after a difficult process of negotiation that Ambassador Suarez, I'm sure, explained it you uh, quite uh, detailed, uh, it was uh, finally uh, solved and we don't have uh, any more problems, territorial problems. Well, of course, everybody has problems, but uh, <laughs> territorial problems with our neighbors. Uh, but that's very interesting to, to know uh, about, uh, I mean, about the uh, Peru-Ecuador uh, conflict, because uh, 
uh, it was a sort of paradox uh, uh, that Ecuador uh, finally had uh, peace with uh, its neighbors and uh, not suddenly but uh, uh, the conflict come from uh, south of Ecuador with Peru to the north with Colombia but is a very different it was a or it is it really still is a very different uh, kind of problem because it's not uh, uh, once uh, it was but uh, uh, really now it's not a, a problem between states or governments but with the, with the uh, impact of what uh, was I hope it was happening in Colombia everybody of course uh, wishes to know uh, and to learn about uh, the success of uh, the peace process within uh, Colombia between the government and the uh, different uh, uh, groupings of uh, guerrilla, especially with uh, the FARC. So, well, uh, about uh, Ecuador and Colombia, uh, what can I, uh, can I tell you? Uh, the uh, relations between Ecuador and Colombia, and Colombia have been really uh, friendly since uh, uh, both countries uh, become, you know, become independent, uh, but as uh, usual between uh, bordering countries you have had uh, highs and lows. And uh, uh, the, uh, if, we, uh, if we took uh, since uh, mm, 1960 or 1950, uh, the problems, because uh, uh, Colombia, uh, I don't know if uh, be between you are uh, somebody from Colombia or has some, or it's, oh, so you can uh, talk about more than me. Uh, uh, Colombia has had since uh, uh, the middle of uh, last uh, uh, Siglo, uh, century, century um, uh, a tradition of uh, violence, uh, political violence, and then uh, since the 60s, of course, that uh, violence uh, increased increase a lot. Uh, but the problems in Colombia stayed in Colombia. Uh, but, uh, and then, uh, I'm sorry to say, because many Americans are here, uh, the uh, uh, Plan Colombia uh, that was uh, agreed between uh, President Clinton and President Pastrana uh, was designed to, uh, was supposed to fight against uh, drug trafficking of course, uh, uh, against uh, the guerrillas and uh, the development. But uh, it was uh, essentially a um, plan, a uh, program to uh, fight against uh, the uh, guerrillas, especially, uh, as I said, with the FARC. And the FARCs, uh, well, the uh, Fuerzas Armadas Revolucionarias de Colombia, uh, was at that time uh, a very, very strong uh, uh, military force. And uh, uh, that's why uh, both governments agreed uh, and uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, was especially interested between, uh, uh, I mean, uh, not between, but uh, with uh, solving especially the problem of uh, drug trafficking. And, of course, uh, at that time, uh, it was uh, still, uh, I mean, in uh, the 80s, for example, the uh, East, uh, East and West uh, problem or controversy or war, Cold War. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, at the end, and the 
beginning of this uh, century, uh, there was uh, this uh, uh, sort of uh, agreement between Colombia and the United States. They asked as well the uh, help or the uh, participation of uh, European countries, but the European countries didn't agree in the uh, uh, military part of the Plan Colombia, but only in, in not uh, in a big uh, dimension uh, in uh, what was uh, uh, related to uh, development. So, finally, uh, the most important, of course, uh, uh, part of this uh, Plan Colombia uh, was in charge of uh, the U.S. and, of course, uh, uh, Colombia. What happened since uh, uh, the Plan Colombia was uh, put in place? That, uh, uh, of course, uh, the military, uh, the Colombian military uh, were more uh, prepared, they were, uh, they received more uh, uh, weapons uh, and uh, uh, they learned from uh, the American military uh, to uh, uh, fight and that wasn't easy because uh, as you may uh, uh, know already, uh, uh, that's why I wanted to, to show you the, uh, the um, limits between Colombia is from here. I don't know if you can see here in the, the, the boundary. Uh, and uh, that's why I, I think, that's my theory, <laughs> uh, that Ecuador uh, has three types of, or three boundaries with Colombia. Because geographically, it's uh, quite uh, um, uh, visible that uh, you see here is uh, the uh, the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and you go uh, you go uh, west. I mean, not east. And uh, here is uh, the uh, costa, the uh, coastal area of Ecuador that is a, a very uh, uh, different uh, type of uh, uh, geography, uh, type of weather, uh, very, very different from uh, uh, what uh, it begins with the Andes. This is the mountain uh, area of, uh, the, uh, of our boundary with, uh, with Colombia. Uh, here, uh, even the type of people that live there, they have the very different uh, uh, traditions. Uh, the type of people are very different. Uh, here, it's very interesting to, to underline that uh, in both in both sides, there is a, a very important uh, component of uh, Afro-descendant people. Uh, so they are very different, uh, uh, the uh, Ecuadorian Afro-descendant people that live here, than the people that live in uh, the Andes, in the mountains. Uh, this uh, region is not so uh, uh, poblado, uh, populated. populated, then the, the, uh, in the Andes, in the Cordillera, Cordillera de los Andes, as we call it, uh, because uh, most of the people live in this region. And then we go to the Amazon from here, somewhere here, through here. Uh, that region is the uh, Amazonian region of Ecuador. So it's, uh, well, uh, as you may, <laughs> it's the same as in Colombia. Uh, it's uh, uh, Selvatica, uh, jungle, uh, poor, uh, yes, jungle and uh, very difficult to control and that is very, very important to uh, take into account because uh, in this region, uh, especially in this region, uh, the gorilla, the FARC gorilla were present in the state of Colombia. Uh, had, uh, well, not only problems in some parts, 
there were no presence of the state of Colombia because it is a very, very difficult uh, region uh, to control. Hmm? And it's the same here in the uh, uh, Pacific uh, coast, uh, coastal area because it's, uh, it's as well uh, uh, jungle in some parts and uh, I don't know if you are planning to visit the, mm, the coast. The coast, or unfortunately, the UNHCR and Esmeralda invited us, but just logistically we couldn't do it. Oh. So I did want to contextualize for everyone. So we're here. Oh. We're going to be here in Tulcan in the, the Andes crossing, and then when we go to Baeza, that's here, mm -hmm. and then we'll go as far in as here, um, which is where the Cascada San Rafael is. Um, so we'll get a little bit into the Amazon area. This is the big capital city of the region. We won't go that far. Uh, but So you'll get at least a taste. It's very interesting to be there, and it's very interesting, interesting to be in the, in the boundary, uh, in the uh, Puerto San, uh, I mean, uh, Puente uh, sobre el Río San Miguel, mm? uh, because I think I, I have been, not been there since uh, five or six years, and uh, I uh, and you may uh, tell me uh, things are changed, have changed there, because at that at, at that time the, the when I was there, uh, when I was foreign minister, I went there to, to visit, to know what was happening there. And it was uh, incredible to see in the, uh, in the bridge uh, from Ecuador to Colombia, uh, it wasn't possible to cross uh, the river because at the other side, uh, I saw some military, uh, uh, at least with military uh, uniforms, uh, and I thought uh, it was the Colombian military, no, it were, it, they were the FARC. They used, uh, of course, military uh, uniforms. Uh, so it was uh, really uh, impossible uh, to cross or, no, it was, uh, it was uh, for people that lived there, it was easy. They were, they had uh, permanent uh, contact, uh, economical contact, um, but, uh, well, let's uh, go back. Uh, that's my theory, that we have three types, or three boundaries, because they are very, very clear to, to see the difference between these uh, three types of uh, boundaries and the, and the problems that each of them have. Well, uh, with the Plan Colombia, uh, the problems <laughs> to, for Ecuador uh, began because uh, the military actions uh, of the uh, uh, mi Colombian military mm, against uh, the FARC uh, pushed them to our boundary and to our territory. Uh, you know that we have free uh, crossing uh, of the boundary between uh, Ecuador and Colombia. So uh, the FARC uh, guerrilla, they only took up their, their, their uniforms and they uh, crossed uh, the border, the river, whatever, and there was uh, no problem. They were Colombians that were coming to Ecuador. Uh, but uh, then we uh, began to have a very, Ecuador, uh, began to have uh, very uh, complicated problems with migrations or refugees or whatever you can call them, migrants or whatever. Because many uh, uh, campesinos, peasants. peasants from Colombia were pushed because of the violence uh, to Ecuador. Uh, now I can say you uh, that uh, following uh, uh, figures from uh, uh, Colombian uh, authorities, uh, at least the Embassy of Colombia here in, uh, in Ecuador, uh, there are uh, nearly 400,000 Colombians in Ecuador. We have the highest 
figure of uh, refugees, uh, 65,000 refugees uh, recognized as uh, refugees by uh, uh, High Commissioner of Refugees of the UN. Uh, and there are uh, 150, I think, uh, thousand uh, Colombian that are uh, requirentes that are uh, asking asylum seekers, asylum seekers uh, to the uh, UN and to the Ecuadorian authorities. Uh, with the, uh, if you add those numbers, the migrants that uh, are irregular migrants. Not illegal, irregular migrants, uh, and not only in the uh, border region, but in the whole Ecuador. Even Guayaquil that is very uh, far from uh, from from the uh, boundary in, uh, uh, in to the to the south of Ecuador. Uh, I think you you cannot well you cannot say the number the exact number of. <laughs> of uh, migrants, refugees, or, well, refugees, yes, but, and uh, asylum seekers as well, uh, because they don't have uh, papers, they don't have mm, documents. But uh, this uh, figure that is uh, using, our, uh, the, uh, it's using the uh, embassy of uh, Colombia, I think it's uh, really one that uh, we can uh, uh, accept. Uh, there are many Colombians in uh, Guayaquil, in Quito, of course, and in, in, in the uh, cities uh, near to, to the border, as Ibarra, Esmeraldas, uh, Lago, Ari, uh, Lago Agrio, um, uh, and other cities uh, or small towns in the uh, uh, border region. So, uh, that become a problem uh, because, uh, as you can understand, Ecuador is not a big country. The economy of Ecuador is not so, so big, so we can have uh, and we can, so we can uh, receive uh, this uh, big number uh, of uh, Colombians. But uh, that uh, uh, it's uh, really interesting to, to see, uh, we were talking with Jeff about uh, a project that uh, I uh, uh, have been uh, doing uh, two years, cada dos años? Uh, every two years. Every two years, uh, about uh, uh, the, uh, what Ecuadorians think about uh, Peruvians, Colombians, or whatever. and. Uh, uh, it hasn't had uh, a uh, social reaction uh, such as big as you can uh, imagine. Mm? So, uh, because many of those Colombians, that, uh, uh, most of them, were uh, good people, working people, very uh, uh, decided to even to create jobs, uh, and they were uh, well accepted except <laughs> uh, at the time of the Angostura incident uh, that I will uh, talk about uh, in a few minutes. Well, um, at that time, uh, with this uh, uh, reaction of the uh, Colombian military uh, to the uh, south of Colombia, uh, the problems uh, uh, increased. Uh, between the governments, because uh, there were in incidents that uh, caused lives in Ecuador. Uh, grenades that uh, were uh, thrown by the military or by the FARC uh, and killed some uh, innocent Ecuadorians that were working or living uh, in, uh, in, in our side of uh, of, uh, of the border. Uh, and uh, uh, with this problem of the migration, uh, the tension between uh, both uh, countries uh, increased. 
The other component, uh, and it's, this is uh, also very important, the other component of the Plan Colombia uh, it was against uh, drugs. Uh, and one of the issues in this component was uh, the uh, fumigation. Air, aerial spraying of uh, pesticides. Uh, yes, of uh, the uh, plants of uh, coca. I'm not, not coca, coca. Mm? Uh, the coca plantations in the uh, Colombian side not in the Ecuadorian uh, side, because we really, uh, we, we really don't have, uh, uh, we have a little of uh, plantations of uh, coca in our side, but all the plantations in the uh, Colombian side, it, they were really uh, important, big, and uh, it, they were, uh, controlled by the FARC. And uh, the uh, Plan Colombia uh, had this component of aerial or spraying of uh, uh, a herbicide called glyphosate. And the glyphosate, you can imagine in some, in some places, uh, I don't know, uh, here for example. Uh, by the way, if you've ever used Roundup, in your garden, that's what it is, yes. glyphosate. Glyphosate, it's uh, produced by an American, uh, uh, what's the name of this big company? Uh, Monsanto. Yeah. Uh, uh, all this uh, uh, part of the, of the, uh, disappeared. <laughs> this board has its own mind sometimes. <laughs> uh, the problem for Ecuador was, well, uh, if Colombia wanted to, to, to uh, spray this uh, glyphosate, this glyphosate uh, in uh, the territory, they, they, of course, they are free to do it. Uh, they were, they, they, they were, there was not so many people here in this region, and most of the people living there, in the uh, Colombian side, were the guerrillas of the FARC. Uh, but in the side of Ecuador, there were peasants uh, that were uh, uh, growing uh, uh, bananas, uh, uh, whatever, coffee, uh, banana, uh, cattle, cattle. And what happened? Uh, these. Uh, Spraying was made, uh, the aerial spraying was made by uh, avionetas, small, uh, small planes. Uh, that, uh, for example, that, that, that was at the time of President Uribe. Uh, he was uh, following a schedule of uh, spraying uh, that was agreed in the Plan Colombia. And uh, uh, he uh, said that uh, they were only spraying in the Colombian side. Uh, but uh, if you, you can imagine, uh, uh, if you spray, uh, the spray uh, of this uh, glyphosate, it doesn't uh, go in this uh, uh, perpendicular or vertical, it's in the air. So, uh, if you go uh, with uh, uh, this plane uh, in this uh, uh, part, uh, in the Colombian part, uh, uh, the air, the wind, may go to the Ecuadorian side. Uh, I went there at that time because, well, I had a pile of uh, uh, papers, documents, uh, certifying that that was happening. Uh, that but there is not m more important or credible to go there and see. And I went there and saw. It was incredible. Uh, people with the uh, skin destroyed, uh, babies uh, with, um, uh, I'm gonna say that, uh, uh, that were, uh, were born with- uh, Birth defects? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, many cancer in that region. So, uh, Ecuador, when they were going to spray, and uh, they will do it 10 kilometers in the Colombian territory. And uh, uh, the agreement, uh, I, I, I understood the concern of, uh, of Colombia, yes, but uh, it's more important, uh, uh, at least for us Ecuadorians, the effects of this type of uh, wrongdoing uh, for peasants that were well, absolutely not concerned about what was happening in the other side of the border. But uh, the problem, as you can imagine, uh, a, uh, a plane uh, goes in a, in a straight line. Uh, and, uh, for example, it, uh, it cannot go following all these uh, different uh, uh, in, uh, straight, uh, straight or, or yeah, like uh, curves. Curves uh, spraying these uh, herbicides. Uh, so, if you can see here, how can a plane, well, you, many of you are very far from here, but uh, how this plane can go and do this? Well, I mean, uh, it, it went uh, really uh, straight. Uh, straight. <laughs> so, we had a lot of problems. And that made the relations more uh, tension between the two countries. Uh, we had to we had to uh, uh, make claims to the uh, government of Colombia. Uh, but finally, as I told you, in December uh, 2005, we um, get an agreement. Uh, uh, and the agreement was no more aerial uh, spraying, but, and that was uh, very interesting uh, and very, very good attitude of, uh, from Colombia, that they were going to eradicate the uh, plants, because they are small plants, uh, of um, coca uh, by hand. Uh, and that. <laughs> was very complicated, very dangerous, and at the same time very uh, costoso. costly. costly. Uh, they need to eradicate one plant, three soldiers, or at least uh, one uh, campesino, one, uh, and two uh, other to uh, defend this uh, work uh, from the guerrillas. That's why it was dangerous, it was costly, and uh, it was very um, lento, very uh, slow, very slow. But that was the arrangement that we, we uh, made with, uh, with uh, Colombia, and that was uh, very well received in Ecuador. But that uh, only lasted for 11 months. And then Colombia uh, began uh, to uh, spray by air. And then at the same time, uh, there was a change of government in Ecuador. Uh, from uh, the government of President Palacio, in which I was uh, the foreign minister, uh, he changed to President Correa. Correa, as you know, uh, he had, because well, he left power uh, one month ago. Uh, a more tough uh, stance uh, on this issue. And uh, uh, as you know, President Uribe is uh, very uh, uh, radical or very uh, uh, hard uh, as well uh, in, in this issue. So the tensions between uh, the uh, governments uh, become uh, more complicated. <coughs> In that, uh, at that time, uh, there is when uh, uh, this uh, uh, project or this uh, proposal uh, began, 
uh, it was created the Grupo Binacional de Diálogo uh, between Colombia and Ecuador. It was an initiative of uh, the Carter Center with the uh, auspicio, uh, the, uh, the sponsorship, the, the sponsorship of the the UN, the, uh, the UN, uh, the PNUD uh, in English is UNDP, the UNDP, the UN, UN Development, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what was the idea? The idea was uh, to make uh, or create a more friendly uh, relation not only between of governments because that, that was important but uh, between people of Ecuador and Colombia. Uh, the idea I, uh, I learned from uh, Jeff that you had uh, read I think uh, uh, something about this um, uh, project I call more a project, uh, the Carter Center and the UNDP uh, took uh, 10 Ecuadorians and 10 uh, Colombians, uh, representative of different areas, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, journalists, uh, uh, professors or academic, and uh, one uh, foreign minister from each side. I was the foreign minister of uh, Ecuador, and uh, Mr. Ramirez Ocampo, a very well-known uh, diplomat, uh, was the foreign minister, the former foreign minister uh, that represented uh, in the Colombia group. And we had a, a very, very interesting uh, process. A process. Uh, uh, we had, I think, uh, six uh, meetings, two in Atlanta, you know, in Atlanta is the uh, uh, Carter Center, and uh, two uh, in Bogota and two in uh, Quito. Uh, and to talk about uh, how we saw from our side, the Ecuadorians, and from the Colombian side, and how uh, a journalist, so the relations and how the um, <laughs> uh, the diplomats in my case uh, saw the problem and how the uh, uh, private sector uh, saw because we have had all, always I think uh, a very good relation in uh, uh, trade uh, uh, contrabando count Contraband, contraband, trafficking, trafficking. That's the word, because uh, as you know, the the life in in, in uh, uh, boundary regions is very, is very different. Uh, people from each side, they are, they know each other. They they don't feel they are doing wrong. They only uh, I don't know sell or exchange uh, bananas from Ecuador and coffee from Colombia and whatever. Uh, but trade and this type of relation was very important. So the private sector uh, had a different, not different, but uh, a, uh, a view of the relation with Colombia uh, in uh, their uh, legitimate uh, interest. Uh, journalists, uh, academia, uh, well, people from different fields, and we met to talk about uh, the relations and what we can do to create. Well, first of all, uh, and that was, and I'm going uh, fast on that, uh, because in my case, uh, as a diplomat uh, and as a foreign minister that had to deal with this problem, it was really, really very interesting to know what was happening in the other side of the boundary. Uh, what was the perspective from Colombia regarding Ecuador? Uh, and at the same time, it was very interesting for the Colombians what was happening and what was the view from Ecuador on Colombia. For example, as I told you uh, now, uh, they talk 
about uh, 400,000 Colombians uh, living in Ecuador, at that time let's say 300, and uh, how much refugees were living at that time in Ecuador, uh, and how Ecuador or the government and the people from Ecuador were helping uh, the Colombians that were uh, huying, fleeing, or fleeing. Or fleeing from the conflict in, uh, in, um, in Colombia and how we uh, help them and uh, what the, uh, uh, the UN was uh, helping as well uh, these people uh, these refugees uh, that uh, lost everything uh, because of the guerrilla. Uh, and that was interesting for, I can say, oh, the whole uh, Colombian uh, uh, group. Uh, they didn't know uh, really the dimension of the problem. Mm? And for us, uh, it was very, very interesting, and for me especially, <laughs> uh, what was the real problems uh, regarding uh, uh, the development of Colombia in this uh, region uh, because uh, of the guerrilla and the drug trafficking. So it was a very interesting exercise uh, in which uh, both the Colombian uh, group and the Ecuadorian group will learn a lot about each other. And what was, what was uh, the idea? To do uh, things, many things. <laughs> they were uh, even uh, uh, crazy things uh, that were uh, talked about. Uh, for example, there was a... a, a Remember that at that time we had a very uh, tense relation, not only at, uh, at the government level, but uh, people from Ecuador didn't like uh, Colombians coming because they were a lot, they were every, everywhere. Uh, but uh, in this uh, uh, GBD, uh, Grupo Binacional de Diálogo, uh, we decided to do, as I told you, some crazy things. For example, there was a very important, uh, in Ecuador and many of uh, your countries, I think, uh, as well, it's very important, soccer. Hmm? There was a very important uh, game uh, between Colombia and Ecuador. And we decided to uh, use uh, a, a big, uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, Bandera, uh, or banner, uh, banner. Yeah. It's better a banner, uh, telling uh, Ecuador and Colombia we are friends and we want peace, something like that. Uh, and at the same time, but those were some uh, crazy ideas. But it, I don't know if they work or not. But <coughs> the idea was to create uh, from this uh, uh, group, uh, this binational group. Uh, some uh, uh, actions uh, to try to uh, keep tensions uh, very low. It was impossible to uh, erase the, 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 uh, the tension, but to try to keep them low. Uh, other uh, ideas. were regarding the, uh, especially the journalists that were in uh, Ecuador in uh, uh, Colombia uh, group to uh, write uh, articles in uh, different, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, journals or uh, TV because we, we had, uh, I don't know if you have uh, seen the, the list uh, uh, of the people from Ecuador, and but these journalists were uh, people that had very uh, important influence. Uh, I must say that, of course, uh, all these exercise, as it was uh, uh, promoted by the Carter Center and the UNDP, uh, was accepted by the governments and even the, na the names of the people that were in these uh, uh, meetings or in these actions was approved 
before by both uh, governments. Uh, I am not uh, uh, sure why they accepted my name. <laughs> but, uh, well, it was very interesting because myself, I have a, a, um, a column uh, a column in the uh, newspaper? That's right. Uh, an opinion uh, uh, column in uh, El Comercio, one of the two main uh, uh, newspapers in, uh, in Ecuador. And we wrote about uh, Colombia, not really about the, the conflict, but about uh, uh, what was happening. In, uh, in my case, uh, uh, I wrote, I remember, three or four articles uh, talking about the, what was happening really in, in Colombia. Because I learned in these uh, meetings and uh, the, talk, the talks with that uh, I had with the different uh, members of the, of the group. And it was, uh, I think, well, it's different to, to uh, evaluate the impact of uh, the action of the uh, the group, but uh, I felt and we felt that we did a lot. But uh, in the middle, or not in the middle, but uh, one year, well, yes, almost in the middle of what we were doing, uh, the uh, Angostura incident uh, almost uh, broke uh, our uh, work. Uh, I don't know if you know about uh, the Angostura problem. Uh, the, uh, that was in, in, in these. Oops. <laughs> 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 Texaco is in a small city in uh, the United States Texas. that is uh, called uh, Lago Agrio in English. Sour Lake, Texas. Sour Lake, Texas. And that, <laughs> that's why uh, uh, they call Lago Agrio is the translation of Sour Lake to uh, this... Uh, now it's uh, an important city in, uh, in Ecuador. But the, the real, the official name is this is very uh, correct. Nueva Loja. That's because many people from Loja, that is in the south, uh, came to uh, colonize this, uh, this region. But uh, it's, uh, it's uh, quite uh, uh, curious that uh, uh, the name uh, that is known uh, is Lagoage. Well, that's another story. Uh, but in this uh, re region here, yes, some, some, some more here, uh, called Angostura. It's, I don't know, uh, 10 houses, no more than that, and the jungle. Uh, as you can imagine, it was very, and it is very easy for uh, guerrillas um, from far to cross them. The river, it's a small river, well, it's not a big river, so they can cross and rest in the Ecuadorian side. And there was a, a camp in, this, uh, in the Ecuadorian side, five kilometers from the, from the, the, the boundary. And, uh, uh, well, the uh, intelligence from Colombia and uh, many, uh, well, not only from Colombia, but from uh, the US, 
uh, that were working in this Plan uh, uh, Colombia uh, detected that there was a meeting in Angostura and there was a uh, bombardment and an uh, incursion. Incursion, basically the military crossing over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not only uh, with planes, but with troops. And it was five kilometers inside the uh, Ecuadorian uh, territory. And uh, uh, troops that went from Colombia to Ecuador to find uh, this camp. Of course, without, without telling the Ecuadorian authorities, without, uh, it was an, an illegal, absolutely illegal incursion in our uh, territory. Our sovereignty was violated, and this uh, incident uh, took us, Ecuador, to uh, broke the relations with uh, Colombia. Uh, President Correa at that time was very uh, energetic. Uh, it was proved that the uh, uh, these planes uh, came uh, uh, from Colombian territory, and they uh, introduced them very. Uh, how do you say that? Uh, muy adentro, muy uh, uh, very far in. Very in far in to uh, bombard this camp in this way, mm. uh, from south to north. I was called uh, by the president. Uh, I was teaching at that time here. I was in the uh, foreign service uh, to a committee a crisis uh, in, uh, in the palace here in the presidency. And I really saw uh, all the proofs of how the, uh, all the trees were uh, bent over. fall or bent over in this. Uh, so uh, it was necessary to uh, uh, the, the bombs uh, to go from, nor uh, from south to north. So they had following the, I don't know, the experts, military, they told that at least they had to go uh, 50 kilometers inside of our territory to turn and uh, bombard uh, this uh, uh, camp, this temporary camp of uh, the, the FARC in, in here. And uh, the troops that came uh, by the ground took uh, all the uh, information, uh, and especially the laptops. And the laptops were a crucial and state uh, problem between Ecuador and Colombia, because uh, uh, there was uh, very, very important information for the Colombian uh, uh, military, and as well for us, because we wanted also to know what was going on really in, in this uh, region. But well, finally uh, we broke uh, diplomatic relations with uh, Colombia. We thought that uh, this um, exercise that they, uh, we were doing uh, was over. <laughs> it was finished because uh, it wasn't possible to uh, continue. Uh, but uh, Cecile, if, if she uh, were here, uh, she could uh, explain to you how we and how she and uh, the group, uh, and she worked uh, for the uh, Carter Center, uh, they decided and we as well decided to continue. Um, even more necessary to, to work uh, in what we were working without relations. <laughs> uh, and that was uh, very important because that was a signal that I, as an Ecuadorian, I was against 
this action from Colombia, of course. And not only myself, it doesn't matter, <laughs> but uh, the whole inter-American system, the OAS, uh, in a meeting, in an uh, urgent and emergency meeting of uh, ministers of uh, foreign affairs, uh, condemned this uh, illegal uh, incursion. And Colombia, President Uribe, uh, asked for apologies. Mm? Uh, but that was a very hard time between uh, both countries because President Correa, uh, he was, and he still is, a <laughs> very uh, strong and difficult uh, politician. Uh, very diplomatic. Huh? Very diplomatic. Yes, uh, even without time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we work, we continue working, and finally we, uh, that was, uh, I don't remember clearly the, the dates, but uh, uh, at least we have uh, three more meetings uh, in Quito and in Bogota. And uh, it was very interesting how uh, the Colombian part uh, of our group uh, they weren't, uh, they didn't agree with uh, the uh, action of uh, President uh, Uribe. And remember, at that time, the uh, defense minister of uh, President Uribe is now President Santos of Colombia. So, uh, I really thought that uh, with President Santos there, it was, it was really very difficult, very tough to uh, make the relations uh, normal again because, of course, the, the defense minister <laughs> of President Uribe know every detail of what, what, what had happened in Angostura. But, well, finally, uh, many, uh, well, I think that our group uh, do, s I, it's, as I told you, it's very difficult to say how much we had an impact in the relation, but I think that we, uh, we did uh, something, and something important. Uh, Uribe left uh, power, and uh, Santos, uh, it was a surprise for me because he was the defense minister of Uribe and I think it was a, a surprise for all Colombians to change the uh, policy in, uh, in Colombia regarding this because, uh, you know, finally uh, President Santos has uh, uh, signed the peace with, uh, with FARC. Uh, so things uh, changed. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, there was a very uh, difficult agreement between uh, both countries and we normalized our uh, relations and we now we are very good friends, uh, even though we have contrabando, that's uh, part of <laughs> the way of living in, uh, uh, in every uh, boundary. But now, what we have is the uh, post uh, peace uh, uh, time that it's very difficult uh, and that's not my uh, it's not my intention to talk about that because we are now leaving you know uh, two, two days ago the the um, de armas the the disarmament disarmament we suppose and we expect and we hope that uh, all the arms of the, uh, the weapons of um, uh, the FARC were given to uh, the UN. To the UN. Uh, so now it comes the uh, very different, uh, very difficult, uh, different, and a very long, I think, uh, period in which all the uh, members of the FARC, the guerrilla. Uh, nobody knows how much, but I think at least uh, 8,000 or 10,000, uh, they have to, uh, they want to uh, participate in politics, 
but not with uh, with uh, with guns or with with weapons, but with the words. <laughs> so uh, I think uh, personally that uh, uh, the Colombia problem. Uh,